For those of you who aren't familiar with the done reality, that's for people who believe they are done, that they have evolved, they have uh, become enlightened, and they really don't have any more growth ahead of them because they've already grown as much as anybody can grow. And they refuse to have another incarnation because they're done. They've already, you know, they have caught in their own mind, they have uh, gotten outside of this, you know, cycle of suffering and they're not going to go back there. And what I found is that the people there, anybody who feels that they're done and anybody who kind of uh, takes pride in being enlightened probably is not done or enlightened either one because both of those are ego you know ego stances if if you really are low entropy then you want to help you want to be part of the solution you want to help others you care about others it's not about yourself so you would of course you'd want to come back and help you know you're never done this idea of being done is coming from an ego that believes itself to be done. Okay, so these people end up in the done reality and they're not as done as they think. So there is a fair amount of ego there already to begin with. And then what I find is that that ego starts to grow there. And I found that it was very cliquish. There was groups of people who felt that they were more evolved than those people over there. You know, that sort of thing, which, of course, is just more ego. And most of them probably were fairly low entropy. These weren't people who were, you know, completely imaginary. They had learned some things, but they weren't nearly as low entropy as they imagined themselves to be. So these were pretty gentle people, you know, pretty nice people, yes. But they still had a pretty good size ego. And... When held together, you know, in the company of other people that also had fairly good sized egos, they tended to interact egoically and started to de evolve in a sense. And that is because if you don't continually try to put effort in to evolving, you de evolve. To evolve takes effort. You don't just evolve because you're sitting around waiting to grow up. You have to take an active effort, put energy in to grow up. You don't grow up just because time passes. So they had stopped putting energy in because in their own minds, they were as grown up as one could get. I guess that's how they define enlightened. enlightened. They were as grown up as you could get. Stop putting effort in and pretty soon they're de-evolving in their little clicks of who's more who's superior to who and it didn't take too long before these people would realize that they were de-evolving because they weren't dull people so they did figure that out and as they figured out that they were de-evolving and this was not working out well for them then they opted out and they said okay ready ready to go back you know i've got a Tune, tune myself up here. I'm kind of slipping. And then they'd go back and get back into the, you know, back into incarnating and, and interacting with people and so on. So they kind of learned their lesson, I think. But that took a while. And I was in this, this, this reality many times. You know, I had to spend a long time there before I figured this out. At first, I just went there and said, wow, this is a nice place. You know, there's not a lot of, you know, people aren't punching each other, you know, people aren't stealing each other's wallets, you know, this is a really pretty nice place. But after I'd been there a, a while, I kind of got what was going on, you know, so I'd, I'd go there and I'd say, well, I'm not sure what I was supposed to learn there. This is actually a pretty nice place, you know, and I get sent back again. You know, it's like, well, I must not have gotten it. There must be something else here and I haven't gotten it yet. So I'd look around and I just didn't really see anything because I was looking at too superficial, you know, a, a perspective. And I get sent back again and I'm thinking, well, I'm really missing the point. So I started to dig in deeper and that's when I began to realize what was going on. So that's the done place. And yes, you have a good point. When we are here in, in the reality we're in, there, you know, most of us, the, the very large majority, are not very grown up. Low quality of consciousness is, is the most common thing here. 
high quality of consciousness is, is, uh, is much rarer here. And that gives us lots of opportunities to make good choices. That gives us lots of challenges to grow up making good choices, even in a place that's kind of rough and unpleasant and full of low quality consciousness. It's harder. Therefore, your gains are greater when you succeed here. So it is a place where you grow quickly. And that's what this virtual reality is. It's a place where you tend to grow up, you know, pretty quickly once you understand that that's what you're here to do is to grow up. I mean, once you see how what what the game is and where you are and what you're supposed to be doing, you can grow up faster. Lots of challenges. And if you went to a place where everybody was mostly grown up, the rate of growth would probably slow down because there wouldn't be so many challenges anymore. So why go to a place like that? What you really want to do is come back to here where there's lots of low quality of consciousness because this is the place that needs the help. It needs all the help it has, all the examples of high quality that it can muster. It needs them here. So there's really no point in having that place where people who are more evolved hang out so they don't have to hobnob with the riffraff that is low quality. You see, that's just a bad idea all by itself. You know, the thing you want to do is go to a place like that, because that's where the challenge is. That's where you can do more good. And that's where the big need is, because there's, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of people of low quality consciousness for everyone with a stellar quality of consciousness. So that's, that's the nature of this reality. Now, let's say we go forward in time to the point that we do grow up here, we take some big steps, we learn, and most people in this reality, you know, get to at least a, you know, a, a, a fair quality of consciousness, if not really a good quality of consciousness. Well, and that happens, then you're right, the rate of growth will probably slow down, because there's not so much uh, pushiness, you know, there's not so much distinction between right and wrong, you know, it's like, well, this is right, but this is a little more right, you know, now you're splitting hairs as to what the optimal solution is rather than, oh, that's just wrong, you know. So, yes, that would be like that. And if that's the case, you know, what would the system do? Well, if the system, of course, is continually putting new people in, right, the population keeps growing, and new people keep coming in, and this is a good place for people of typical or average quality of consciousness, which generally means low quality of consciousness, a good place for them to be. So there's always new people coming in at the bottom. So it's unlikely that we're all going to get to the point that we're all grown up. But let's say that happens anyway. We do. Well, the system could put us then in other virtual realities. And we could go there and be good examples. We could go there and help with those. And we could form new things. As we grow up, and a lot of people grow up, we will form something different than what we have now. We will have bubbles like this, you know, that are, you know, everybody's communicating all the time telepathically. You know, we will have things, we will make things that are much different. I guess the best way to show that is by analogy. You had, you had single cell things, they grew up, and they had multiple cell things, they broke, and they got they made multiple cell things, which were which were more complex, lower entropy, and, and could do more things. And then they had things that had many, you know, many multiple cells have organs, like we do, like, um, you know, mammals do and a specialization of cells. And now they could do a whole lot more things. They were more flexible. They were lower entropy, just from the, the biology of them was lower entropy, more complex, more capable, had larger decision space, more things they could do, more ways they could be flexible. Well, that's the same with us. Now, here we are, we're one of those animals with specialized cells, and we're not going to fuse shoulder to shoulder fuse with other human beings to make one big, one big animal, you know, that's what bacteria did, but we're not going to do that. We together are going to form 
another kind of a thing, a conscious, aware thing that is going to be all of us cooperating and working together are going to form this thing. Now, what does that look like? Well, it's a collective consciousness that has a lot of love power. You know, this thing can can go everywhere, do everything. It's not, and it's not just a physical thing. Well, you got all the individual people in it that are physical things, but that consciousness can move around the galaxy, you know, move around, you know, some other galaxy someplace else. It can do all sorts of things, interacting with people, helping out, finding ways to to care, finding ways to help others. And it's not even limited, you know, to our planet. It's not uh, even limited to this virtual reality. It can, it can go to other virtual realities and help out. So we will create a, a different sort of being, a conscious, aware being that is the sum of a lot of individual people all creating this conscious bubble, you know, that is... Uh, conscious in itself. The bubble is conscious. So you can see, you know, it just keeps building up more and more complexity, more, and you know, lower and lower entropy, bigger and bigger decision spaces, more places it can work, more things it can do. And then there will be multiples of these things. There'll be lots of these things, these bubbles, these conscious things that can do all this stuff. And how can they organize themselves to create lower entropy you know, in the whole system. They can wander around the whole consciousness system. They're not even here. So you see, it just keeps leveling up. That's the, that's the point. The larger conscious system is still evolving. And there's some aspects of this evolution that we haven't even begun to imagine yet. But what can, you know, billions, trillions of IUOCs do when they all cooperate? What can a trillion IUOCs do when they all are caring, they're all loving, they're all compassionate, and they're all cooperating. What can they form? You see, how can they work? What else, where can they go? So the, the possibilities are huge. Homo sapien is only 200,000 years been walking around as Homo sapien. Yeah, that's not much time. You know, what's it going to be another 200,000 years from now or a million years from now? You know, what, what else can we form when, when we work together to form a bigger thing? So, yes, the, a place like this virtual reality may get less and less useful in as much as it's, you know, most everybody's gone past the, the low entropy or even mediocre entropy. But then the need for this kind of thing won't be needed so much more. The whole thing will graduate to another whole level of cooperation and caring. And there always will be challenges. And the system will be lowering its system enter entropy all the time. And how far can that go? I don't think there's, there's really going to be an end to that. You know, what can trillions of trillions of aware beings of love accomplish together? What spaces can they move in? Can we go outside of this consciousness system? Are there other consciousness systems out there that uh, need help or interact or have their own bubbles? You know, where does that end? It's consciousness, and I don't see that it necessarily has an end. Although I don't have visions into where it could possibly go because, you know, I'm like one cell in my fingernail here trying to imagine, you know, a, you know, a human body. So I don't have insight as to where it might go, but I can see that the possibilities of of large numbers of consciousness cooperating and caring and and growing and evolving is way past my ability to even imagine you know the forms they might take you know okay maybe the same thing we did here on earth we need to do in the galaxy and maybe the same thing we do in a galaxy we need to do you know in the you know in the super galaxy of which we're a part and then in all the super galaxies, you know, and then all the super galaxies and all the various, you know, physical like uh, virtual realities. You know, it's possible for virtual realities to be blended together. You, know, you could, 
if the programmers wanted to do this, could have a game where the Sims characters walk into the, you know, the world of Warcraft, you know, and back and forth. It'd just be a different game. The system can do that. You know, it can, it can connect us to other reality systems. So who knows what kind of virtual war worlds the system may create, virtual universes the system may create, and the, the, the opportunity for consciousness to grow and express itself as love. <laughs>